appeals me right now is seeing him and DeAndre run two man game. Oh yeah. Because they're doing two man game and you're seeing Luca spotted up in the corner. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, there's a good three point shooter and, and a guy who's better with the ball in his hands. He creates he when he has the ball in his hands, when Luca has the ball in his hands, mm-hmm. the offense is so much better. Mm-hmm. Now, Luca, one area I'm not here just to continue saying like, oh, Luca's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, he's been very good, but he has had some issues with turnovers. Mm-hmm. But that said, he, yeah, he creates very well. And when you see like, I'm worried about that. Like in the fourth quarter of the next game, you have DeAndre uh, in a two man game with West trying to force a backdoor pass. When you got Luca standing wide open right there, mm-hmm. uh, and DeAndre just goes away from him, and that's after the next thing as well. Um, so let let's get into that. Let's let's move into our next segment on this. Uh, we have in this game, and I can probably pull up the highlight. Give them the rundown. I'm gonna actually pull up the highlight that I got on here as well for it. The oh, clip. of the play? Yes, yes. So you, right. you give them the rundown while I pull this up. So what had happened was, uh, I, I forgot who shot the ball, but it was Nick that shot the yeah. ball from beyond the three-point line, uh, misses it, and the only two players that are down there in rebound position was Luca's pretty Luca. much by himself. Yeah, Luca basically, Luca was pretty much by himself. you tracking the ball, and then you literally see DeAndre. And the... And, what what's worse about the play is that he didn't even just like grab the rebound. Like when you if you grab the rebound, you can be like, oh, you probably didn't see him. No, he literally tipped it out of Luca's hands and what, tipped it to and himself. with the off hand pushed kind of, him. Yeah, back. And which by the way, Luca's been dealing with a sore back and getting treatment before every game. Yeah, so you're there kind of forearm shipping him in the back as you're stealing the board. Um, that is something. And that, I, I've had I've seen I've seen um, DeAndre do that um prior to this game to be honest with you but i was thinking he's you know he's trying to be a leader on the team he knows his role is to get rebounds um so he wants you know i remember we were talking about him and dennis dennis is like yo don't worry about coming back take off and get the rebound get the ball like he yeah he wants like sole responsibility to get that, all the rebounds and you and you see all the other players kind of respecting it but they never went as far as i'm gonna tip the ball to myself that's the other reason it's frustrating though is because yeah. Luca is one of your best ball handlers in transition. That's part of what makes him so special yeah. being the point forward that he is, is that he can get the ball, get out in transition and find guys mm-hmm. wide open or the trailing, you know, guard or whatever. That's his strength. So it's weird to move away from his strength on that. And then he threw it oh like to somebody else too. Like he yeah. Did like, yeah, he didn't My even bad, he didn't, I didn't even know that was you, bro. I thought you were the other guy. Exactly. Bro. Yeah, he passed it off to a different player. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully it wasn't West. As well. If it was West, I would have been <laughs> we're on Twitch. Yeah, we are on Twitch. I, we do have a Dallas Prospect Twitch account as well. About. Every now and then I throw that out there to plug that. <laughs> to remind himself that he he's on Twitch. I'm tr- I'm trying to make a little more of a concerted <laughs> effort in that place. But yeah, so let's see here. I'm going to get this pulled up. So the the whole issue with this, there are people asserting that DeAndre is effectively stat padding here to try and sort of make up for. Uh, if you want, you can read the questions that come across there as that's well. Like, that's literally what he was talking, asking. So you're probably about to answer it. Oh, stat. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Um, so stat padding is what people are suggesting for DeAndre because he hasn't been the rim protector that they thought or hoped. That he would be, he did have that one game with five blocks, mm-hmm. but like I said, the Lakers game was wretched. He gave up more. He gave up Javale McGee's best night of his last yeah. five years. Yeah. Even though he himself had pretty good rebounding numbers too, he just it, it wasn't a good showing. Yeah. And so his value, his greatest value at this point, comes from rebounding. He's averaging over fourteen a game. Yeah. And we just we heard something from the Mavericks need. Let's not, yes. Let's it, not. It, yeah. It, I'm not. Tro- I'm not totally trying to. Uh, tone down or say whatever about his play Uh but i will i will remind that it's a guy who yeah hardaway took the shot so the the context is we found out from luca and like the interview before the season even started where he talked about deandre jordan saying like yeah, he gets mad if I get try and get the rebound or whatever. Like he wants every board and he treats it like it's his thing. And yeah, I, I, I get I've, the I've mentality. Seen, I've, I've seen yes, that on the, the same on clip. The board, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, like I said, he shoves him in the back. It's not like it's the thing about it is you can see Luca is frustrated by it because he just stops, glares at his own bench, 
and kind of walks up the court because yeah. board stolen from him. And then Deandre passes it to someone else. He's clearly frustrated with it. And man, I, I don't know what to make of it. It almost looked like Mark Cuban was, you know, Cuban was mad too. Visually frustrated yeah. Him, Cuban so. was mad too. Let me get this, uh, dialed up here. Okay. Let me try to see if I can read anything. I go for positive one. Uh, Dorian Finney Smith slowly but surely turning All into right. a two way player by I, I'm gonna try to pronounce her name. Jared so Jared Zapanta. So yeah. I, yeah, Dorian Finney Smith is turning into quite the player. So here's the clip here. <laughs> It's on, it's on the prospect page if you want to look at it. I don't know why it looks a little laggy here. Yeah. I guess just because I'm trying to do a browser filter through it. But Did you see it? Yeah, Luca kind of walking away. Yeah, Lu- yeah he, Luca's stepping away. He's out of frame for what you see there. But mm-hmm. Luca kind of steps away and he glares at the bench. Um, uh, and know? when you mix with that, what I said before, Luca only getting four shots in the fourth quarter despite being 4-4 four of four and Dallas trying to mount a comeback. Yeah. They're not getting stops, and then they're getting empty possessions on offense. Oh, yeah. You pair all that together, and it seems like there's something there. Uh, and then you add in, after the game, you have, as frustration is running high, first of all, media members asked J.J. Barea, and I want to say it was Dorian Finney-Smith, okay. about the stealing rebound thing. Okay. And both of them, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but both said... It is a little bit of a problem. Obviously, it's not what you want to have happen. You don't want friendly fire. We just have to work on that and communicate better. Okay. That's the answer, which to me acknowledges, like, we're aware of it, mm-hmm. and that's not that's not a cool thing to do, but we need to deal with it, it in-house. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that. that's how I perceived uh, the message there. Yeah, it's going to run the Twitch thing again. To be honest, I didn't, I didn't read any uh, press things after the game. Uh, I mean, I was kind of frustrated because I, I believe that that was a game we could have won. So this is probably something it, you're going to take on. Absolutely. So after the game as well, um, in addition to that, mm-hmm. you have this heated moment between uh, Wes Matthews and Donnie Nelson, the GM and president of basketball operations, mm-hmm. right outside the Mavericks locker room. Yep. And the context I've gotten since then is suggesting that it was essentially them trying to it was Wes effectively trying to understand from Donnie, what more can I do to help this team win? <laughs> but that's okay. So that, that's the context of what's being That's from Rick Carlisle today. Okay. But here's the thing. Nah, as soon as I heard that. Two, min- two seconds left to go on the top. Yeah. Well, that too. You can not do that. Yeah. Not. Yeah, for sure. That's a puppy <laughs> gut. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, for, for sure. But that's a weird thing to me because why are you going to the GM? To ask what can I do to help yeah, this team so, win? Isn't that a question right. for Rick? Yeah, I, I, that's what that's the context I'm wondering. Like maybe that was kind of the lesson, the takeaway from it, but maybe the context had more to do with. I don't know if Donnie Nelson is the kind of guy who would talk to the players and say, "Hey, Wes, you're one of the leaders on this team. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what's going on here with Luca and some, you know, some of the other vets, mm-hmm. but we need to sort this out." And then maybe Wes takes some kind of offense to that. I don't know. I don't want to put words in the mouth, but it almost seems to me like you could have that conversation and then still have Rick be like, yeah, the takeaway is what can I do to help this team be better? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it, I, I don't know, man. It It's so weird how this felt like a largely uneventful game, but we got so much to it because you're on a six-game skid. People are going to be looking for reasons and figuring it out. Yeah, and Oop. I mean, to, to add on to, to put fuel in the fire, I mean, we had – this is probably the most anticipated year – and the Mavericks in a long time. And yeah. when you when you're when you have a year, when you have a team that's in, as anticipated as the Mavs is and stuff doesn't go right right out the bat, yeah. Everything begins to be an issue when sure. if we were winning, it probably wouldn't be an issue. If we won that game last night, we probably wouldn't be talking about DeAndre stealing rebounds from Luca. We'll all be laughing or whatever. So, I mean, I'm like I said, I'm not really too worried about it. My main concern is winning games because I know if we win games and we have in the past even when we try to tank uh-huh. um, we do figure out ways to at least still be competitive sure. and stuff like that with so, the, our team is way more so let me more, ask uh, let me ask you though than they were last do you year. think DeAndre Jordan is stat padding <laughs> man I mean shoot no yes I mean just rebounds he's not like that's his one area yeah, yeah he's that. not like you know 
taking ill advised shots or anything like that. Right. So if you right. Stat power rebounds. Hey, dude. Do I mean do you? Do you, okay. keep up with your true? Keep, keep up with your free throws and. To be honest, he's not playing bad. I know people. We're losing right now, and people are not happy with him because they did it to our our treasured rookie who was putting up mad numbers right now. So people are not happy with him just for that. But I mean, literally, if you take all the emotion out of it, DeAndre Jordan, and he's not playing defense like you know, one of the main things that you you know paid for him for. But um, <laughs> you need drops anyway. Um, yeah, that's the reason why we got him. Um, but if he's not, if he's not doing that, um, oh, I should people, stop people are gonna get mad. Yeah, yeah, people are gonna get mad. But uh, he's really not playing that bad. I mean, if you put his numbers up there, he's sixty-four percent from the field. Yeah, uh, fourteen rebounds a game. So eighty-two percent from the free throw line. Best free throw shooter on the team. Exactly. Um, so in that regard, yeah. Yeah. So let let me ask you this then. Um, speaking of the frustration, mm-hmm. we already talked about Wes Matthews, who is one of the most, who's been shouldering most of the blame. Yes. Uh, Dennis Smith has shouldered his share of blame. Yes. Now I would say before so. the Laker game, which that went bad for him. He got benched the last six minutes, didn't even play in crunch time as yep. they made that comeback. Yep. But the two games before that, San Antonio and what was the other one uh, that we talked about? He was out the Toronto game, uh, and then it was San Antonio and whatever game was right before that. That's slipping my mind. He had two very impressive. Bulls? No, Bulls was a low score game for him. Um, regardless, that was like seven points. Yeah. Regardless, um, he had two very solid games. What was the game before Toronto, we rolled his ankle. Hawks before it were before Toronto. That was where he rolled his ankle. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, uh, he had two solid performances. Looked like uh-huh. he was bouncing back. Then the Laker game was really bad. And then even in the Nick game, he starts hot, and then he goes cold. He had some really bad plays in that, though. Like, he, he's been uneven. He's still trying to figure it out. I don't want to put a lot of blame on him because I'm like, you're a he, raw 20-year-old talent. Yeah. And and just because Luca's younger doesn't mean that like Dennis boss. should be at that stage yeah. too. Here's another here's another thing that we need to realize too. Dennis Smith has been a point guard his whole and an on ball point guard. On no ball, heavy usage. That's what I wrote about in guy. my last article. Yeah, I yeah. did see that too. I appreciate first of all, I saw that article and I appreciate the fact that even in the midst of all this, you still said they're still gelling together. They're still figuring stuff out, mm-hmm. which is true. Yes, we have people who are calling, hey, let's trade Dennis Smith. Are you? I don't want to mess with people on the chat. Or anything like that, but no, that's dumb. We're that's like we're three years too early for that, yeah, that nonsense that's coming out. Like Dennis has been an on-ball guard his whole career, and he's still young, right? And he's still figuring out how to play uh, with Luka Doncic, and they both need the ball. Yeah, Luka, you can't right take now, the ball away from Luka because Luka's phenomenal with the yeah, ball. A good way to look at it right now. They're not so much playing together as taking turns right now. They're not playing off each other a lot. It's yeah. more like I run the offense for a while, then and you then run you the run offense, offense for yeah, a while. Exactly. That that's something that you just have to gel in that way. That mm-hmm. takes time. I mean, you saw that with uh, really even LeBron in- and Wade in Miami. Yeah, the really. first twenty five games they weren't that good. Nope. They took time to figure it out. Now mm-hmm. those guys were much more developed and along in their career, oh, yeah. so it was a little easier for them. It might take the full year for them to learn how to play together. And I have no problem. Like with that. really, really play together. And that's mm-hmm. yeah, and that's. That's what we've been trying to say this whole time throughout the offseason. I know that we we get excited about the potential and yeah. you know, there's certainly a possibility of it. But the main thing we seem to always come back to was tap the brakes. I don't think this is a playoff team. Yeah, yet. They I, need think, time. I think the problem is they the players themselves were saying that they're a playoff teams. And we said, oh, because we got Luca, we got yes. Andre. Yes. We're like, maybe we can be a playoff team. And now everyone has these expectations when they really they need to realize we are still a young team. There's going to be a gelling process. There's still a learning curve. We're not there yet. We still need, even though we don't have our, our first round pick unless we continue this trend. Yeah, for you got to be a year. bottom five yeah. in the draft for that. Yeah. Um, but I, don't, I definitely see them turning around somewhat this year. We're most likely still aren't, aren't going to get our first round pick. And that's okay. All I want to see is growth. Yeah. And if we see growth, and quite frankly, I feel like if the league sees growth, we're going to be a destination. Mass yep. fans, stop panicking. Speaking of panicking, the one villain remaining to a lot of people's perception, 
do you buy into Rick Carlisle being part of the problem right now? Hell no. No. Stop. People. Yeah. P- stop. People calling for Carlisle's job is really frustrating me because even if they got their way and we did fire him, we would look back in like a year and be like, I made a huge mistake. Exactly. <laughs> Joe from Arrested Development. Yes, yes. Freaking. That, that was a good drop. I, I was waiting on that yeah, one. Yeah, man. But yeah, that, yeah, that's a dumb mistake. We're talking about a guy who I believe is top three. Top three coaches in the league right now. Um, it, it is something that he he's going to have to figure out how to utilize these guys because I'll be honest, he is making mistakes right now with regard to sometimes he's keeping the second unit in there too long. He'll take Luca out he, when Luca's hot. He's not, yeah, that's kind of weird. Sometimes it's weird. Um, I mean, my only gripe with him sometimes he needs to learn how to you know stick with a hot hand or stick to the rotation. And sometimes, yeah. like when he says he takes Luca out when he's hot, like that's part of the rotation. He needs to come out or when the second. On his second unit, which is actually a pretty good second unit, I'm actually quite generally, proud of yeah, generally, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, when they get hot, they he tends to keep them in <laughs> the people's creek to, to, to play together. You know what, dude? I'm all I'm all in, bro. I'm Ooh, trying to change my damn Rangers game to uh, Middleton to Dallas. K. Chris Middleton. I don't know. Oh man. Yeah, he's that's what um that's what I'm wanting for that six seven long and then people defender. wanting Jimmy Butler. 